in was it October 2017? It, it has been over four years um, when I had an incident where essentially my entire neighborhood got shut down by police and it didn't take too long for us to uncover that it was essentially a swatting call or uh, a prank phone call, uh, as it were, but uh, one that happened to say the right words, which triggered a uh, lethal force response from local law enforcement because they thought that people's lives were in danger. So essentially someone claiming to me, me calling uh, my local law enforcement and saying that I had killed people and had hostages and bombs and all this other stuff. And, and so, um, you know, thankfully that situation ended, uh, it ended without incident because I wasn't even home at the time and I ran into the police blockade trying to get to my house. Um, and this was, I mean, this was obviously fortunate. And if, if not for that one thing, it might have ended differently. Um, but this actually, and you know, I have several really long blog posts that go into all the details, but that's actually an interesting point of operational security that I brought up, which was that when I post things, I, I try not to do it in ways that would give away exactly what I'm doing or where I am at the time. And what I believe happened that morning is that I posted something at probably 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning talking about it being Monday and it was going to be a long week. And I suspect that that's when my attacker saw that and said, oh, he must have just gotten out of bed. So I, that was the perfect time to swat him. But in fact, I was already on the other side of town uh, at the gym because I'm, I'm a really early riser and uh, like to work out early in the morning. And so it just so happened that, you know, they thought that that was a great time to swap me and it ended up not being a great time. But uh, fast forward a, a year or two, uh, basically, I announced that I had been swatted, but didn't really say much more about the details for nearly a year because I spent the next year basically tearing down my entire life and rebuilding it with a, a focus on privacy. And I felt like one of my goals was I wanted to be able to go after the attacker without worrying about more attacks against myself. Um, and also I didn't want to have to completely give up my identity and my reputation that I had already built up around it and start all over again. Uh, you know, in order to protect my privacy. So from a privacy perspective, I kind of took the hard route there uh, because I, I wanted to keep using my, my real name. And yes, it is my real name. Uh, unfortunately, I was not smart enough, you know, a decade ago to think about creating a pseudonym. Um, and so then it turned into really like a four year long ordeal of talking to private investigators, talking to a number of different attorneys, uh, collecting, uh, tips, uh, eventually talking to the FBI, but it took like three years to ever get someone at the FBI's attention. And, and that was also just sort of fortuitous, uh, networking connection. And after, after many years, uh, and handing over all the information I collected to the FBI, um, it took them almost a year after receiving the information to get back and say, Hey, we, we found the guy and, uh, Unfortunately, the, the federal district attorney has declined to prosecute because they're a minor and they just apparently, you know, the federal system doesn't really have good uh, justice or enforcement when it comes to minors. And so they usually just sort of get off. Um, and so we thought it was all over at that point. But then a few months later, the, the state district attorney actually came to us and said, hey, uh, we are interested in prosecuting. And at that point, things happened pretty quickly. Uh, the, the guy in question didn't contest anything. He pled guilty to all the charges. Um, I actually ended up flying out there and giving my own witness statement. And, uh, you know, he basically got probation and a handful of other terms that he has to follow by for the next few years uh, since he did not have a criminal record. Um, so it was, it was a kind of a, a weird conclusion. Like, I, I really... I, I had hoped that it had been an adult who should have known better and been able to take responsibility for stuff. But, you know, I get it. Um, I think we all do stupid stuff when we're kids. It's just, it's kind of crazy that we're at the point now where 
due to advancements in technology and, and certain times when law enforcement and the justice system can't keep up with it, you can have these really weird asymmetries. So, you know, some like 14 year old kid who knows a little bit about tech, you know, just enough to be dangerous is able to actually have lethal force arbitrarily pointed at really anybody that they want because very few people have sufficient privacy to prevent you uh, from being able to find their home address. And, and then that ends up being so difficult to, to have law enforcement even care enough to try to track them down. And then even when they do track them down, the justice system isn't really prepared to do much about it if, if they're just a young kid without a record. So it's a, you know, it's a very interesting and complicated long case, and I'm, I'm just glad to finally have it behind me now. 